How can I make female battle mages a good investment for warfare? Runes are used to enhance the human body's capabilities. They are inscribed onto the skin through a ritual and work by the individual accessing the rune when needed, creating the effect. These incantations vary and focus on attack and defense spells. Effects range from throwing fireballs to summoning shields to shooting lightning bolts from fingertips. The strength of runes are linked to the amount of testosterone in an individual. Males are the prime candidates for becoming battle mages, as they produce hundreds of times of testosterone more than women and produce the strongest magic. Females are capable of using these runes, but at a far weaker level. This empire has a cadre of all female battle mages separate from the men. However, there are a few problems with this scenario. This would be that the process of making runes is expensive and time-consuming, and are therefore generally limited to specialist groups within the army. There is also the issue asking an empire to depend upon and maintain a group of battle majors that are far weaker than traditional candidates. These problems seem to make this idea economically unviable for an empire. What would make an empire invest time and effort to create this kind of force? A spear has a lot more force than a needle, but that doesn't make it more useful. If you want to skewer an enemy, the choice is obvious, but try knitting with the larger instrument. Runes may be more powerful, the more testosterone the wielder has flowing through their bloodstream, but sometimes you do not want power, you want delicate and concentrated application of force in just the right spots. Raw, unfocused power, could yield a decapitation spell, but power concentrated in just the right places can squeeze the right brain artery and kill with instant aneurysms. It could even be the preferable method, if you really want to sell the otherworldliness of your witch army and scare the opponent shitless. For a non-combative example, try to produce a lock-picking spell when everything you do has the force of a cannonball behind it. You would blast the mechanism to bits, rather than preserve it for future use. Healing is also a possibility, it doesn't have to be total, wave your fingers and the body repairs itself, healing magic, but just the perfectly sterile scalpel that is precise application of magical force will be tremendously useful for any operation. Less powerful displays of magic are also likely to be less of a display altogether, they could be less noisy, or less radiant, meaning the user goes unnoticed. And how do you distinguish someone assassinated with an instant aneurysm in his sleep, from someone who died of natural causes? Plus, depending on the culture and prevalence of female magicians, women are less likely to be suspected of these acts and could more easily slip away from the crime scene. The top spies and covert agents would basically have to be either ladies or eunuchs. So by really tying magic to testosterone, you can not just justify the existence of female magicians, but make them all but required for any monarch with a well-rounded military.